Matsu and Matteo Mazzola. Uh, here we are on Lake Zeo. This is our farm, uh, it's a new farm. It's Azienda Agricola Iside. Um, we started uh, one and a half year ago and uh, this is our life project. So it's going to be a multifunctional, multi-purpose uh, farm. Uh, we are trying uh, to set up different uh, uh, agro silvo pastoral systems so we'll have uh, all sorts of products coming out from here uh, trying to integrate all the different production in a ever uh, sort of uh, a system that will become more and more uh, independent from uh, external inputs uh, for these reasons for me is extremely important when when you set an agroforestry system or, or a silvopastoral system is extremely important uh, what tools uh, the approach first of all but also what tools and what machinery you are going to use because it's important to be efficient and fast uh, because if you want to uh, regenerate big, big pieces of uh, land we need uh, appropriate technology that's the for me an extremely important thing so I don't say no to technology, I don't say no to, to factories, but it's important how we choose them. So, yeah, we can check a few of the machineries that we use on our farm. Is, is, uh, they are the, the, the result of a very uh, long research and many years of, uh, of trials with different machineries and, and, and tools. Uh, I don't like to spend money on something that is not used 100% and is not 100% useful for the, for the system. At the same time, I think that machineries and tools are extremely important at the beginning of uh, uh, starting a farm, a new uh, agroforestry enterprise. Uh, but if the system is well set, uh, machineries will be less and less necessary uh, towards uh, the maturity of, of the system. That it means that they can be sold again or rented to other farms that are starting in the area. Uh, so you don't need to buy too many machines. You can you can just get in touch with other farmers that are interested by it together. And uh, yeah, so that's what I think more or less about uh, tools and machinery. Shall we go? So this is the. The Yeoman's plow shank is one shank. Um, it's basically a, a ripper, but narrower, and which actually works differently than, than the ripper. It doesn't disturb the soil as the ripper does, as the subsoilers are, are doing. Uh, this is designed especially to regenerate pastures and to uh, apply it on, on, on the key lane uh, systems, so to create lines. Uh, that will intercept superficial water from storms as well as to create a sort of capillar uh, capillarity uh, effect uh, below ground when, where the, the, the shank works. Uh, it's very beautifully designed, the, the tip and the, and the shin, they can be removed so if they were you can just change those, these two parts and not the, um, the shank. Mm, the most one of the most important parts now is a little bit weird you can't see it very much but is this element which together with the uh, angle of the shank how the the shank works uh, it goes inside the soil normally you will have a pre-cut disc in front of it so the sod will not collect on the shank and what will happen is you're working the soil you're cutting it these elements uh, in, um, sort of make the soils that it all collects against the tool, uh, against the shank, and it makes it exploding. So the whole depth of the hole it will be uh, not plastered, not hard, but like all cracked, ready to be uh, um, colonized by by the roots. Um, behind the shank you can put a cedar uh, to put a green manure or to, to, um, to put a new species in the pasture. Uh, you can have tanks on the frame and so and the pipe behind the shank so you can actually release uh, micro beneficial microorganism solutions uh, or fertilizer or liquid biochar, whatever that is gonna uh, from one side keep the structure of the cut as well as help the plants 
to colonize the cut in a, in a much faster way. So we use this especially to prepare the tree lines, uh, trying to help them to have uh, long lines of soil that is e easily, um, how to say, colonizable, <laughs> let's say like this. So it does what microorganisms and animals uh, from the soils are, are doing, but in a faster and, and, and more efficient and deeper uh, as well. So it's extremely good to, uh, to make the soil more productive and, and usable. So this is a, a flail mower flail mower harvester is uh, a quite particular machine I've been I've been trying different types and and this for me this model of this brand is uh, the best that you can find uh, at least in Italy and that's because it has got hammers not colders the hammers are very important when you have stones and when you have uh, wood to, to flame or to chip and the good thing about it is that it holds around uh, two, uh, two cubic meters of material that is uh, mowed or is chipped and then you can just go whatever you need it, compost pile or mulching or uh, biochar making or whatever and you just release it and then go back to where you're uh, mowing or chipping. Is to me is the best choice when, when people think that they need a, a chipper, wood chipper a wood chipper is very expensive and it's a very long process because you have to take the wood, put it in the wood chipper and move the, the chips again. This one, it, uh, it chips until 8 cm in diameter, so it's quite big wood. You can make long rows of prunings, you just go on top of it and it chi it's chipping it very, very, very fast and easily uh, with less diesel as well, less petrol and just collecting and bringing it away. So we use it to, to mow the grass and use it for uh, mulching the, the gardens. We use it for uh, chipping the, the prunings of, of the trees, of olive trees or whatever. Again, for uh, mulching or biochar making. And it's a very good tool because, especially on, on our morphology, on our type of soil, is sort of creating uh, homogeneity on the soil so closing the holes and cutting the the stones that are coming out from the from the soil and so on so this is biochar kiln is a contiki kiln it was developed by the Ithaca Institute in Switzerland which I think they made an extremely revolutionary uh, design uh, this changed totally to me uh, the way that uh, small holders and small farms can can produce biochar in a very efficient way. So it's smokeless uh, kiln. It's perfect because it will not produce any any smoke. Very simple is a rounded kiln. This one, but now we made also the uh, regular shape, like a rectangular shape, which are much simpler uh, to to make. So basically you start here and making a fire and then when the fire started you start to add layer by layer every you add 10 to 20 centimeters of material any organic material or even green, green prunings yeah you add it when you see that on the top the material is becoming like white uh, grayish like uh, you start to see the ash you add another layer of 10 20 centimeters of organic material and again, 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 until you reach the top. When you reach the top, there is this pipe down here. And what you do, uh, what we do, we attach a pipe that goes to some uh, some tanks uh, where we have either microorganisms or uh, fertilizer. And then the fertilizer, we, they are higher up, so with gravity they come in and they uh, they they stop the combustion from the bottom so you don't create any smoke it, it really raises the level uh, the water raises and it stops the combustion uh, in, in a perfect way if you would pour it from the top it wouldn't be the same because you would just make evaporate lots of uh, lots of water and you would uh, let 
the minerals in the water collect in the pores of the biochar, which is not what you want because you, you want to have lots of pores, uh, empty pores. And then you let the liquid for at least a night, but we leave it for, for a few days. It's beautiful because when you put like a dirty uh, liquid, which is uh, even liquid manure, then after a few days you get it out and it's clear because the, 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 the coal, the charcoal uh, cleared it. And, and there we go, then you have a product that you can process, you can, you can make a finer, but it's, it's not producing any powder because it's, it's wet. And we produce in two, three hours about one and a half uh, cubic meter of biochar. So this is extremely good solution. This is just the, the, the first prototype uh, we did of uh, a smaller version of the Royal Crimper, Rodale's Institute Royal Crimper. Uh, this is for two walk behind uh, tractors. We put it in the front actually, but this winter we'll uh, change the design to make it more and more intelligent. But this it was made with a gas bottle. Uh, anyway, uh, the way it works, it has got this uh, chevron shaped um, uh, coulters which are not extremely sharp but uh, by filling it with water um, the way it works we plant normally veg and, 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 and barley uh, or other cover crops whatever whatever suits uh, your soil and climate and then you you let the cover crop go to flower that's the, the moment the perfect moment the only real perfect moment where you can use the roller crimper and then what do you do you just crimp it down the coulters, they don't cut the stems, but they just crimp them. So that means that the, the stem uh, will be not sort of cut, so it can start to grow again, but it will stay laying down on the ground, producing uh, a beautiful mulch layer, very straight and easily uh, transplant, uh, is very easy to transplant in this uh, layer of mulch, as well as all the roots will stay in the soil and will decompose, releasing nutrients and, and working, tilling the soil uh, in underact. So the, the, the coulters, they don't have to be uh, with chevron shaped. I mean, you can make them uh, straight as well, but you, if you have um, non-regular, unregular soil, stones and things like that, this is the best shape. Uh, you can you can make your roller cream uh, 